Steel Bones, and today we're going to be talking about tectonic plates. To us, this seems like a really basic idea that everyone is pretty familiar with. However, it was developed in the late 50s and early 60s, which make it a very young theory. The basis of this theory depends on the presence of lithospheric plates. Time for a definition. A lithospheric plate is the crust and the top part of the mantle. Where the exact line lies depends on who you talk to. A geochemist will tell you it's where the mantle composition changes, while a geophysicist is much more concerned about the physical properties of the material. This leads to a range of depths and not an exact location. There are two types of lithospheric plates, oceanic and continental. Oceanic, which is denser, and continental, which is less dense. These plates will interact with each other in three different ways. You can have divergent, convergent, or transform boundaries. First, divergent boundaries. This occurs when you have two plates that are moving away from each other. Magma comes up from the mantle, cools and becomes new oceanic crust. Here you are creating new plate material and it is seen as a constructive setting. New formed crust is thicker and warm and as it moves away it becomes cooler and more dense. In an ocean to ocean setting this will create a mid-ocean ridge such as we have in the mid-Atlantic. In a continent setting you create a rift valley which could eventually open up and become an ocean. An example of this is the East African Rift and the Red Sea. The rate of spreading is about three centimeters a year which is approximately as fast as your fingernail grow. The second type of boundary is a convergent boundary. This happens when you have two plates moving towards each other and the more dense one will subduct beneath the other. In general, when you have an ocean to continent boundary, the ocean will subduct beneath the continent. When you have a continent to continent situation, it is still a matter of density and the denser one will still subduct. These boundaries are considered destructive settings. The subducting plate will then dehydrate, which lowers the melting point of the surrounding material. That material will then melt and it will be brought to the surface, creating what is known as a volcanic arc. An example of this is the Andes, which is the Nazca plate subducting beneath the South America. The third way that plates can interact with each other is through a transform boundary. This is when you have plates moving parallel to each other. These boundaries cause strike slip faults, which is a bit of a misnomer because it is more of a stutter and less of a slip. And these, of course, cause earthquakes. These plates don't have to be moving in opposite directions of each other, simply at different rates of speed. Because no material is being destructed or created, this is considered a neutral boundary. And the quintessential example of this boundary is the San Andreas Fault Area. How exactly these plates move is still under debate. Currently, the only methods for studying plate movement and the mantle are mathematics and computer modeling, which is based on seismic data. However, the dominating theory is that they are driven by mantle convection. There's a brief introduction to plate tectonics and what is going on at these boundaries. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will see you next time. I just keep thinking about that guy I saw that did the Is Geology a Good Major? And his initial reaction is, it's okay. The only thing you really do in geology is work for oil companies. That is so untrue. It's not even funny. There's forensic geologists, environmental, mining, geophysicists, geochemists, volcanologists, seismologists,